All right, everyone. I think we have just about everybody logged on. We're at 102, and I see the numbers have kind of decreased or held steady. So we're going to get started. You all should have this briefing in your email box. We sent it out about 20 minutes ago. We started off with this graphic because we just want to make sure people are not confused because this is an extremely complex situation and extreme um, difficulty in terms of messaging in terms of what we're going to have over the next 24 hours. What I want you to remember is no matter what, no matter what we say in terms of products, um, if this gets a name um, with Ophelia, if it's a tropical storm, subtropical, whatever it is, no matter what, we're going to have surge. No matter what, we're going to have wind. And no matter what, we're going to have heavy rain. So it's kind of in the nuances of um, how we name things. I don't want you to get bogged down on that. You should really focus on the impacts, and that's what we're going to focus on here with this briefing. So really, no matter what happens with the storm itself, um, there'll be some slight changes on, on the fine details, but all of us are going to see some impacts regardless. Um, the potential tropical cyclone, those are as something that happened a couple years ago. That gives us the opportunity to start headlines such as the tropical storm warning, such as the storm surge watch before anything has really even happened. I cannot stress this enough. 24 hours ago, we had two model camps. One that kept this as a very weak storm system elongated, we would have some surge and some wind and some range, but uh, some rain, not tropical. Another set of guidance suggested that we could be dealing with a tropical storm. <clears throat> the difference this morning, things have consolidated, our confidence has increased, that not only will we continue to see impacts, but the potential is high enough that this could be a subtropical or tropical storm, hence the potential tropical cyclone uh, statement. Uh, that's why it doesn't have a name yet. And that's why we've been able to do those tropical storm warnings. I can assure you, we've had plenty of meetings with the Hurricane Center, surrounding offices, our regional headquarters up on Long Island, last night, today, this morning, trying to get it as correct as we can for the community. So I appreciate your patience with that, because uh, I know we're a lot closer to the event itself than we otherwise would. But can't stress this enough, this is barely a storm system right now. 24 hours from now, it will continue to intensify as it approaches our coastline into a stronger storm. So things are quickly evolving and we're adjusting as we can. The threat levels, our biggest concerns um, with this system is going to be uh, with the surge itself, and we'll highlight those areas. Um, also wind potential, especially by the coast, inland uh, sounds and rivers and the coastal waters for sure, and then also flooding rain. Not to diminish the tornado threat, but we really think surge, wind, and rain will be where it's at. Since it's a potential tropical cyclone, that's where you get the cone from the National Hurricane Center. So this is the forecast cone. As we always stress with this, don't focus on the cone itself too much. There could be some wiggle with this um, storm track, especially because it's hard to track a storm if it hasn't formed yet. It's just in its infancy stages. And what are we, one o'clock on Thursday? By this time tomorrow, it will be rapidly evolving as it approaches our coastline. So really a quickly evolving situation. On the forecast track right now, um, this white shading and then the letter S is for subtropical storm. It is forecasted to approach our coastline sometime Friday night into Saturday morning as a tropical storm. Regardless if it gets the name Ophelia or not, what I said at the top, the surge, the wind, the rain, is still going to happen. Um, it's all in the de details though on how that storm evolves on how much happens um, to the specific coastline of Eastern North Carolina. We put surge at the top, that's our biggest concern. Widespread two to four feet is possible across the area. It's all depending on the storm track. So right now it's two to four feet, all the area is shed shaded in yellow. <clears throat> but since this is a webinar, I do wanna highlight our biggest concern right now with strong Northeast winds initially is up the Noose River, Pamlico, Pungo Rivers, the lower part of the Pamlico Sound. This by far is our biggest concern area with surge. The forecast is two to four feet right now. Potentially this could be three to five. It's a storm surge watch now. This is something you need to pay attention to with the five o'clock update. This is our gravest concern, lower Noose, um, Pamlico, Pungo Rivers, Southern Pamlico Sound. The other area of concern is the Crystal Coast, especially Onslow County, uh, Bow Banks. Right now, two to four feet of surge is possible. This is all based on the storm track making landfall somewhere near Cape Lookout. If that uh, shifts just a little bit to the west, let's say we have landfall down towards Surf City or Onslow County, that would put us on the right side of the storm, and those values could be three to five feet. 
So if I haven't emphasized it enough, please check that five o'clock advisory tonight, the 11 o'clock one tonight, and the five o'clock one tomorrow morning. It's gonna be a quick evolving situation. Two to four feet is a good forecast for now, but that's all based on the storm track. If it shifts to the west a little bit, our concern is the Crystal Coast, these values could increase by tomorrow morning. Across the Outer Banks, uh, with strong southeast winds, we could have some minor ocean overwash, uh, moderate beach erosion. We don't want to downplay the effects on ocean side, but since the storm is evolving so quickly, we don't have time to build up those waves and get a lot of things going. So we're a little more concerned with the sound side issues on the Outer Banks than the ocean side. Highest concern, again, is the lower part of the Pamlico Sound because of those no northeast winds. But as the storm lifts northward on Saturday, depending on the track, those sh uh, winds are gonna shift around very quickly into the southwest, the west, and that could slosh the water back toward the sound side areas. We're talking Ocracoke, Hatteras Island, even up toward Manio, um, Nags Head, the back end, um, of the northern outer banks. So that's something we just don't know right now. That's why it's wide and broad, two to four feet based on the current track. Depending on the track, depending on is it a southwest wind on Saturday or a west wind, that's when we can fine tune where we think the worst surge will be on the outer banks. You're in a storm surge watch now, that's for the possibility of two to four feet above normally dry ground. If we upgrade to a warning or come out with some hand-drawn areas that are a little bit higher, um, that's because our confidence has increased, and we just don't know now, um, might not know until we get a little closer to uh, tomorrow morning. So we spent a lot of time on the surge. The other factor we're concerned with is wind, especially down toward the coastline and the open waterways. Uh, so inland areas, Greenville, Kinston, farther inland, breezy day, um, not you know impactful as of now. The highest impacts down East Carteret County, uh, hide, especially the Outer Banks, that's where we could have some scattered power outages and communication outages. For the majority of the area, it's a breezy day tomorrow. Winds will increase by tomorrow morning, well ahead of the center. In fact, if everything works out, as the storm really gets going tomorrow, our winds will pick up tomorrow morning into tomorrow evening, and that first surge of winds will be out of the Northeast. We may see a light lull in the winds tomorrow night, don't let your guard down because in the center of the storm will head our way. Depending on how compact it is, how strong it is, uh, that is when we could see a second surge of stronger winds Friday night through the day Saturday as the storm uh, moves to our north. So generally speaking, 30, 35 mile per hour winds for most of the area, wind's not a major issue. But we painstakingly made this map to highlight the Outer Banks, to highlight the coastal waters, but notice these orange shadings go up the Pamlico and Pungo rivers, it goes up the Noose River, it includes the Albemarle Sound. So if you're in the open facing areas allow, along those bodies of water, especially on a northeast wind initially, eventually kicking around to the southwest, uh, you could have some strong tropical storm force wind gusts. Uh, we keep talking about intensifying as the storm makes approach uh, toward our coast late Friday night. Um, and again, that's supported by these strong tropical storm force winds. Um, picking up Friday morning, but again, uh, we could have a second surge with the actual um, landfall of the storm itself uh, Friday night into Saturday morning. Uh, last thing we want to mention in terms of the major impacts, surge, wind, and rainfall. Whole area could have the potential for some um, localized flash flooding. Two to four inches is a really good estimate for rainfall for the majority of the area. I know we've got painted on here three to six. The reality is most of the area is going to see two to four inches of rain. But depending on where the landfall is, where the storm approaches our coast, we're going to have some isolated bands of heavy rain. That's where we could see up to six inches of rain. In those areas, we could have some localized amounts of flash flooding. We don't think it's going to be a widespread rain. In fact, it's going to come in two phases. Initially, as the storm gets going, the rain's gonna pick up in intensity during the day Friday, may see a light lull and become more scattered as the center approaches, and then we'll have more scattered rains through the day Saturday. So it'll become much more scattered as the storm approaches. Could have a few tornadoes. That's not our biggest impact expected from the system. If we see anything, it'll be mainly in coastal areas that are shaded in yellow. This does extend into the nighttime Friday, so as always, emphasizing that point of having multiple ways to receive the warnings. 
So confidence is high that this event is going to occur. If you just are joining us, no matter what happens, subtropical storm, tropical storm gets a name Ophelia or not, we're still going to have surge. We're still going to have wind, especially coastal areas, and we're still going to have rainfall. So let's focus on the impacts uh, as we message to the community. Biggest concern, storm surge. We went broad with a two to four. Right now, our highest concern, News Pamlico, Pongo Rivers, down East Carteret on that northeast flow. That's our biggest concern. And then depending on the track, maybe the Crystal Coast, especially if we get on that east side of the system, if it uh, makes a, a approach to the coast down toward Onslow or Pender counties, that could put us on that higher end of the two to four feet. And as far as the Outer Banks concerned, not to downplay the ocean impacts, but we're uh, primarily concerned with the wind shift into the southwest. Um, that would be uh, late Friday night into the day Saturday would be your concern with surge. So I know this is a quickly evolving situation. We're doing the best we can here with increasing the, the one and two page um, briefings we've given you the last couple days. Our current plan as it stands now, will adjust things as we see fit with the five o'clock advisory from the National Hurricane Center. Expect uh, another briefing from us in the form of a PDF briefing by 6.30 or so tonight. And then we will be with you again tomorrow morning at nine o'clock for a webinar to hopefully uh, finalize any uh, questions as we really get into the meat of the storm itself. So at this point, I'd be happy to take any questions.